Not to us, but to your name be the glory. Not to us, but to your name be the glory. Good morning, First Wesleyan Church family. We're so glad you joined us on this first day of spring. Would you please rise and sing with us as we give praise to our God and King. The cross before me, the world behind. No turning back, raise the banner high. It's not for me, it's all for you. Let the heavens shake and split the sky. Let the people clap their hands and cry. It's not for us, it's all for you. Lord, not to us, but to your name be the glory. Not to us, but to your name be the glory. Our hearts unfold before your throne, the only place for those who know it's not for us. It's all for you. Send your holy fire on this offering. Let our worship burn for the world to see. It's not for us. It's all for you. Lord, not to us, but to your name be the glory. Not to us, but to your name be the glory. The earth is shaking, the mountain shouting, it's all for you. The waves are crashing, the sun is raging, it's all for you. The universe is spinning and singing, it's all for you. Your children dancing, dancing, dancing. It's all for you, it's all for you. Not to us, but to your name be the glory. Not to us, but to your name be the glory. Not to us, but to your name be the glory not to us but to your, to your name be the glory amen we're here to worship our god thanks for joining us you may be seated Well, good morning to each of you. I'm glad you're at First Wesleyan Church this morning and worshiping Him right here, whether in the service or online. We're glad that you're here. A couple of announcements. First of all, if you didn't happen to get a bulletin, they're on the high top tables right outside the sanctuary doors. If you want to grab one, you can feel free to do that. There's some announcements that are in there as well as a place for you to take notes on the sermon for this morning. If you have in the chair rack near you an attendance record, if you please take that out and fill out the requested information and then place that in the offering plate on your way out that help us record your attendance. If you happen to be viewing online, please text me 605-430-3019 to let me know that you're viewing online. A number of you uh, were willing to participate in the youth burrito uh, making, not making, but you purchased some. They were made yesterday. Over 1,200 burritos were made in our kitchen. I was a little concerned that my nasal passages would be filled with uh, taco meat when I came in this morning, but that did not happen. Uh, but the burritos are available. If you purchase some, feel free to go towards the youth room and you can pick your burritos up. If you didn't happen to get an order in, but you still want some, please uh, feel free to go down that way and, and they have some extras that they made up and you can get some burritos from the youth to help support them. 
We have on the information desk some attendance, uh, not attendance cards, but prayer cards. Uh, Mark and Lauren Olson, we haven't had theirs until this week. And so if you want to have one for Mark and Lauren Olson, uh, some missionaries we are now supporting as well as some other missionaries. It's a great way to have one of the cards to remember to pray for the missionaries. So I encourage you to pick one of these up at the information desk before you leave today. On Wednesday night, Awana, which is our children's uh, programming that happens on Wednesdays is having a beach, beach party, but they're also having a pizza party. And so 6 o'clock, if you're involved in Awana, families are invited as well. Uh, be here at 6 for pizza and then for the beach party uh, following that, at, starting at 6.30 is when it's going to happen. Another thing I'd like for you to do, if you have a moment, uh, and just jot this down, uh, two weeks from today, I'm going to be preaching a message from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 10 to 15, and it's talking about God's blessing. And so, uh, the title of the message is Remembering God's Blessings. I would ask of you, if you have a moment to either email me or jot it on your card, something that God has blessed you with in recent days. Now, you could go back 30 years ago, and if you want to do that, that's fine. But maybe there's something in your life that uh, God has just blessed you in. And uh, I don't know that I'm going to share everybody's story, but there may be some interesting connections of a number of stories that hopefully in a couple of weeks I will share some of those. So, Put that in your memory bank somewhere. Uh, maybe jot it down on your card so you'll remember to do that to email me. My email is on the back of the attendance record. Or during the sermon when I get boring, feel free to start writing something down. <laughs> I'm blessed because I don't have to sit here all the time and listen. No, don't say that. That wouldn't be good. Uh, but if there's a bl- something that God has blessed you and maybe your family, maybe your children, Maybe your parents, maybe your grandparents, there's just been a blessing, and you have just seen that happen. Jot that down and send me a note. I'm glad you're here today. Would you please stand with me? We're going to continue in our singing. Let me pray for you, and we will continue in that way. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you today for allowing us to come into this building, a building that's set aside to praise and worship your name. I ask that as we worship you in spirit and truth right now, that you would fill the sanctuary with your presence and maybe glorify your holy name. We're here to worship you, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our God and firm foundation, our rock, the only solid ground, the nations rise and fall. Kingdoms once strong now shaken, we trust forever in your name, the name of Jesus. We trust in the name of Jesus. You are the only King forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only King forever, forevermore. You are victorious. You are the only King forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only King forever. Forevermore, you are victorious. Unmatched in all your wisdom, in love and justice you will reign, and every knee will bow. We bring our expectations, our hope is anchored in your name, the name of Jesus. We trust in the name of Jesus, you are the only King forever, 
Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only King forever, forevermore. You are victorious. You are the only King forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only King forever, forevermore. You are victorious. We lift our banner high. We lift the name of Jesus. From age to age you reign. Your kingdom has no end. We lift our banner high. We lift the name of Jesus. From age to age you reign. Your kingdom has no end. You are the only king forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only king forever. Forevermore. You are victorious, you are the only King forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only King forever, forevermore. You are victorious, you are the only King forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only King forever, forevermore. You are victorious. Promise maker, promise keeper, you finish what you begin. Our provision through the desert, you see it through till the end. You see it through till the end. Lord our God is ever faithful, never changing through the ages. From this darkness you will lead us, and forever we will say, you're the Lord our God. silence in the waiting still we can know you are good all your plans are for your glory yes we can know you are good yes we can know you are good Lord our God is ever faithful, never changing through the ages. From this darkness you will lead us, and forever we will say, you're the Lord our God. without you we won't move without you you're the light of all and all that we need we won't move without you we won't move without you you're the light of all and all that we need lord our god Forever. 
forever we will say, You're the Lord our God. And forever we will say, You're the Lord our God. My Jesus, I love Thee. I know Thou art mine. For Thee all the follies of sin I resign. My gracious Redeemer, my Savior art Thou. If ever I love Thee, my Jesus, tis now. I love Thee because Thou hast first loved me and purchased my pardon on Calvary's tree. I love Thee for wearing the thorns on Thy brow. If ever I love Thee, my Jesus, tis now. In mansions of glory and endless delight. I'll ever adore Thee in heaven so bright. I'll sing with the glittering crown on my brow. If My Jesus, tis now. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy. All together wonderful to me. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart to adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. So here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy. All together wonderful to me. King of all days, oh so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came to the earth you created, all for love's sake. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. And I'll never know how much it costs 
to see my sin upon that cross. No, I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. As we come to a time of prayer, I'd like to make known that the altars are open to anyone that would like to come up. The psalmist says in Psalm 64, Verse 10, let the righteous one rejoice in the Lord and take refuge in him. Let all the upright in heart exalt. As we come to a time of prayer this morning, let us pray knowing that we have a righteous God. And he is the source of our righteousness. Will you bow your heads with me? Will you bow your hearts with me as we approach Almighty God in prayer? Heavenly Father, we are here this morning to worship you. You alone, God, are worthy and deserving of our praise and our worship. You alone, God, is who we serve. And God, we serve righteousness. For you are a righteous God. You are the source of our righteous one. We who are in Christ Jesus are in righteousness. And it's you that we can rejoice in because of this. And God, today we take refuge in you, knowing that you keep us. You protect us. In times where the enemy presses against us, God, you are our Refuge, our great fortress, a fortress of righteousness. And Lord, I ask that you would help us to live righteous lives according to your word. Not according to ours, not according to what our culture says, but God, according to your holy scriptures. God, let us live in your truth and your righteousness and your holiness. And God, I ask that you forgive us. Forgive us when we fall short of your righteousness. And we come in the name of Jesus this morning, the blood of Jesus this morning, asking for forgiveness of our sins. Lord, help us to walk according to your word. Let it be a light unto our path. God, I ask that we store your word in our heart, that we may not sin against you, that we, God, would be a nation set apart for you, a people group of righteousness because of what Christ has done on the cross and him rising it up from the grave. Lord, thank you for your righteousness. Thank you that we can live righteous lives by your Holy Spirit. And I think of Andrea Swartout, who lives in Japan, Lord, who's a missionary there, and she continues to speak your word of righteousness to a people group that is yet to know you. And I pray that your word, your righteous word would penetrate their hearts and it would lift up Andrea. Give her encouragement through all her trials, O oh God. And may she know the God of righteousness is on her side. And Father, I think of our sister church in Sioux City and Pastor Louis Rodriguez. Thank you for Pastor Louis. 
God, may he proclaim your word of righteousness this morning. May people be encouraged. May they look at this church as a place of refuge as well, Lord. May they come to know how great your presence is. And I just want to say thank you, God, for your presence this morning and how you continue to reveal yourself to us in many different ways. And Lord, I ask for your your provision and your presence in the Ukraine and Russia situation. God, there is many that have lost lives. There's parents that have lost children, and children that have lost parents, loved ones lost. And this is just a, a sad situation, a terrible situation, Lord. But we ask for you to intervene, to come in and do your mighty work. Only you can change the heart, oh God. Only you can direct us on paths of righteousness. And I ask for your righteousness to prevail in this situation. Lord, I think of those who came in today. Maybe they're dealing with some physical ailments, some pains. Their body's not working the way it's supposed to. They have concerns on their mind. God, I pray that you would just, even right now, Lord, touch them. Remind them that you are with them. That you would bring your healing power upon them. I pray for the one that's concerned about situations of the world, the concerns of the world, concerns of the family, that you would grant them wisdom and that you, God, would be their peace, the peace that surpasses all understanding, that will guard their heart and mind in Christ Jesus. And Lord, I ask as the great comforter to comfort those with a burden on their heart. May they know of your goodness and your care for them. God, may we bring our cares to you for you care for us. And as we continue to worship today, O oh God, we ask that your word would come into our lives and that we would live them out, that we would breathe it out, that God, it would be a part of us, a lifestyle, that we would do it with all that we are, that we would love you. Be with Pastor Steve as he delivers the message today. And God, be with our hearts as we receive your grace. Lord, we love you, and we pray these things in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Thanks for coming to church today. Deuteronomy chapter 6 as we find ourselves yet again, this chapter 6 is just packed full of some wonderful instruction and encouragement in, in our lives. If you happen to get a bulletin, you looked at the front and you saw the words S-H-E-M-A, and you may say, what in the world is Shema? And it's actually Shema. And uh, I'm going to be talking about what the Shema is, which is actually the reading of our Scripture today. I don't know if you were able to find uh, the fear of the Lord Scripture list last week, but a week ago I preached about fearing the Lord. And it's all throughout Scripture how we are to fear the Lord. And if you happen to find one, uh, feel free to jot me down a note and say, hey, I found a fear of the Lord in the Scripture when you're reading. The Shema, what is the Shema? The Shema means hear. It's a creed of Judaism. It is said that this is the first scripture every Jewish child commits to memory. It is used to open every Jewish service. And it doesn't merely mean to hear, but it means to listen, to take heed, to let the words sink in, to respond to what is being said. And so, uh, I would like you to join me, if you'd be willing. In just a couple moments, I'm going to have you stand, if you're willing and able. And if you would, we're going to recite the Shema before I preach it out loud. So, would you stand with me? The words will be behind me on the screen. If you um, would like to look into a Bible, there's one, and it's on the chair Bible near you on page 151. You ready? Here we go. Hear, O Israel. 
The Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. Now before you're seated, um, I was at a gathering one time where I heard about the Shema. And uh, I'm not sure if we really felt it this morning. I'm not sure if we really meant it with what we said. I want to encourage you this second time not to just go through the motions. This is an important text. In the Old Testament, I'm going to point out to you why it's important in the New Testament. It's important to us today. And so, if you would, um, would you mind this time, I don't want you to yell at me, but I do want you to give a little more volume. And I want you to give a little more tenacity to it because this is important. This is a creed that I think we need to live by and understand. So would you join me again with a little more vibrancy and passion for the text today? You ready? All right. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might, and these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. Thank you. You may be seated. Number one, we serve a monotheistic God. What is a monotheistic God? It is one God. God is one. Jesus declared this as well, I and the Father are one. We don't serve two gods. We don't serve a number of gods. We serve the triune God, but we only serve one God. I think it would be uh, terribly hard to serve two or more gods. It's like having three bosses, and they all have a different expectations, and you've got to go to them. Maybe some of you understand that. <laughs> And how difficult it is. Like, am I supposed to respond to this guy? Am I supposed to respond to this guy? Or am I supposed to respond to that gal? It's very difficult. We serve one God. We know His standards for us. It's like having four teachers that you turn your assignment in. You've written a paper. And all of a sudden, this teacher said, well, I was looking for a little more grammatical. I was looking for a little more feeling in this. And you're like, what am I supposed to do here? How can I? Who's going to grade me? It's like standing before a judge. And a judge is getting ready to sentence you. And one says, 20 years in jail. The other one says, parole for six months. The other one says, first time offender, go on your way. Which judge would you want, of course? But it's trying to figure that out. We serve one God, a polytheistic religion, a religion that has many gods, would be exhausting. If you want rain, then you have to pray to the rain God. Or how do you know if you're praying to the right God? There's a God for this and a God for that and probably a God that's made up on the spot. I say that very carefully. I know that there are religions that have certain gods and I'm not trying to make fun of any other gods. But I will say this, we serve one God. Christian believers all around the world serve one God, not two, but one. It may be that we worship in a different language, but we are praying to Almighty God. Some of you may say, well, what about the Trinity? The Trinity is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm not going to go into much talk about the Trinitarian uh, God that we serve, but there are three distinct realities and substance of the one true God that serve different functions, but they all are the Godhead in one. It's a bit confusing at times, and you may study uh, the Trinity for some time and still come out and say, I don't understand that totally. And I think that's great because our God is beyond our thoughts, and we can um, understand Him even better. But we serve one God, and we serve this God together. You read it out loud, the Lord our God. It's not just about my God. It's not just about your God. The Lord is our God he is the God of Israel, but He is the God over all. Now, you've got to understand, when this was being written, there were many religions, and many of these religions had a number of God, and they worshiped in different ways with different forms in different places, and it's just all different. And God is saying, Hero Israel, the Lord of God, the Lord is one. 
worship this one God. One of the things that's neat about the Catholic Church is that, I understand, to the best of my ability, that the Mass that is shared this weekend is shared all over the world. And so if you went to a Mass today in Rapid City, South Dakota, or in Europe, or in Australia, it'd be the same Mass. Now, the evangelical church doesn't do it quite like that. If you were to go to Minneapolis today, or if you were down to Denver, or if you were to go to Phillips, South Dakota, an evangelical church doesn't have a, a set of things that you need to go through, a Protestant church doesn't have. But, however, you go and you worship the same God, the same God that is worshiped in every church. Now, if you're in a church sometime and they're not worshiping Almighty God, then you need to leave and go somewhere else. This translation says it, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. There's another translation that can re- refer to it and say, This is the Lord alone. Now, that doesn't mean that God is alone by himself out somewhere, wondering where he should be. However, meaning he alone is God, he does not have to depend on any other person or any other thing. He alone is worthy of our praise. He alone is worthy of our love and our devotion and care. He alone is the one that we need. This is a text that does away with the polytheistic mindset and sets the Israelites to worshiping one God and one God alone. The second thing is this, love God with all your heart. Love God with all your heart. Um, you may say, how am I supposed to do that exactly? I'll get to that, to get to that in a moment. But let me go to the New Testament where Jesus is talking. Because sometimes we think, well, this is the Old Testament. It doesn't matter all that much. But it does. And Jesus pointed this out. In the Synoptic Gospels, which there are three of them, Matthew, Mark, and Luke are called the Synoptic Gospels. They are each um, referenced here about these verses. Jesus is asked these questions in the Synoptic Gospels. First of all, in Matthew chapter 22, verse 36, the question is asked of Jesus, Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? It's the first question that's asked, or not the first question, but it's the question that's asked him. In Mark chapter 12, verse 28, again, it's recorded. Which commandment is the most important of all? And in Luke chapter 10, verse 25, the question is asked again, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Someone asked Jesus this question. And here is Jesus' response. In Matthew chapter 22, verse 37, it says, And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. What's the greatest commandment, Jesus? There must be something here for us if Jesus talked about it. And he references Deuteronomy. In Mark chapter 12, verses 29 and 30, just a couple of verses later, following the Mark 12, 28 question, Jesus answered, the most important is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Luke chapter 10, a couple verses after Luke 10, 25, 27 and 28 says, And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Jesus, some 13 to 1400 years after Deuteronomy, is asked the question of what's the most important commandment of the law. And he says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your might. And then he also says, love your neighbor as yourself, which is from Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18. 2,000 years later, we look at this once again, and Jesus, God, the Spirit tells us, love the Lord your God with all of you, all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. So what does it mean to love someone with all your heart? Many times I think that would be more of a, in a, oh, you know, that little fun love, you know, with a spouse or a girlfriend, you know, that, that kind of love. I, I do think it means an emotion. However, it doesn't necessarily mean we have to have this emotional up and down and all around, and it doesn't mean this heart muscle. 
Everybody has a heart this morning. Are you thankful for your heart? Pumps your blood. You don't have your heart? <laughs> you got some major troubles right now. Some of you have understood that and you had some heart troubles in recent days and it's nice that you're past that. The Scripture says this, guard your heart for it is the wellspring of life. So I ask, do you love God with all your emotional being? Now, again, I don't think you have to cry. I don't think you have to laugh. Ah! Just there's an emotional part of who you are. Do you love Him, God, with all of your heart, with emotions? And it's one thing to say it, and it's one thing to live it. I chatted with a lady recently, and uh, she felt that were some others that were saying negative things about her. And I mentioned this to her. I said, let your character win the day. You know if somebody loves something with all their heart. And you know when somebody doesn't love something with all their heart. You can just tell it. If you're a teacher in the classroom, you can tell the kid that doesn't love what they're studying. <laughs> they're off in who knows where land. If you're involved in sports of some time, you know when somebody's heart's not in it. You're like, they're here, but they're not really here. A pastor might even be able to see it on a Sunday morning. You come into church and you're like, and then you leave. Heart's not in it. That's none of you. Because you are all have your heart in coming to church and you're here. But maybe there's been a day where you're like, oh, I got to go to church. And your heart wasn't in it. And maybe on that day is when God spoke and He said, your heart's not in it. And the message wasn't even talking about love and your heart being in it. I want to encourage you, love the Lord your God with all your heart. Don't love your spouse your children, your parents, your grandchildren, your pets, your house, your car, more than God. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart. One commentator said it this way, the heart of religion is in the heart. The second thing that he says, which is point number three, you shall love the Lord your God with all your soul. I think there's a spiritual connection with our love. Your soul, what is your soul? The soul is the deepest part of who you are. Your soul is with you for all of eternity. Truth be told, your heart's going to stay in your body, but your soul doesn't. Your soul will end up in hell or it will end up in heaven, depending on how you love or don't love God. Now, we're not talking just about the soul, the bottom of your shoe. We're not talking about that. It's not just in words. This is in all of your doings. And how do we love God with all of our soul? Because He gives us that love. 1 John 4.19 says, We love because He first loved us. You cannot I'm sorry, you cannot love God with all of your ability other than getting it from Him. I've made this contention before, and I believe it to be true. I believe that people who are outside of Christ, according to 1 John 4, can't really love in the best way because they don't know Christ. But if we are ones that are in Christ, we should be able to love better, if you will, than any other person. Why? Because we have Christ's love living in and through us. Now, there are some individuals around you like, they really love very well, but think of what they would be more if they had God's love pouring in through them. The soul is the center of the personality of man. The other one in point number four is love God with all your might. Sometimes uh, when we love, it's with conditions attached. We expect, we think, we deserve. But how great <clears throat> is the love that expects nothing in return. God loves us, and we ought to love Him in return. 
I think our might is our tenacity and a grit that we show in a situation. And may all of our might, our grit, our tenacity be given to the Lord and not to someone else. It can also be viewed, I think, our might with our physical beings, with how we take care of our bodies, how we don't take care of our bodies. If we love the Lord our God with all of our might, then we want proper rest. We want proper intake. That's how we say we love God. This could also be rendered as your strength. You know that might that somebody has. Love the Lord your God with all your might, your strength. Love is mentioned, this word love, ten times in Deuteronomy and not elsewhere in the Pentateuch. I think Moses is trying to get something across to us about loving God. And it's on the, the heels of fearing God. So not are we only supposed to have this utmost respect and fear and awe, but we are to love God. God loved us first. And C.S. Lewis said it this way, On the whole, God's love for us is a much safer subject to think about than our love for Him. I want to read this again here for you. Here's what the Scripture says. You shall love the Lord your God with your heart and with your soul and with your might. Is that what it says? It doesn't say that. I missed a three-letter word in there that I mentioned last week when I had some brownies. And that three-letter word there again is the word all. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your might, and with all your soul. Not some, not lukewarm. The church in Revelation was talked about, you're neither hot nor cold, you're kind of lukewarm. And when Jesus met with Peter, following the resurrection and reinstated Peter. How many times did Jesus ask Peter, do you love me? He asked him three times. Seems kind of a connection here. You shall love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. There's three things. Three times Peter was asked. I'm not saying exactly that's what he was saying, but there's a connection here that maybe we should love God a little bit more. But maybe... uh, Some of you are like, well, I don't know. I think I love God. Maybe a way is to look at it in the reverse. What if you love God with just some of you? Will will you receive the the blessings of the Godhead if you just give 75% to God? What What if you love other things? Can you love all those things through Him? Yes. What if you don't love God with everything? I'm going to pick on Donna, Donna Hemstock, for a moment. How long have you two been married? 64 years. years. That's greater than the number of people in the room, how long they've been alive. Um, Donna, have you always loved Donna? Ever since you met her. Um, There were, uh, Donna, have you always felt that he loved you every time, every place? The answer is no. I believe that the answer is no, because there's probably been a couple times when you said, you knucklehead, what are you doing? You didn't say that, did you? No. Okay, good. Yeah. Don, was there ever any times where you thought you didn't feel your wife's love as much, maybe? No. Okay. She's perfect then. She is. (laughs) Wow. You better leave this morning feeling very good, Donna. You are perfect. There's something about your love for one another that despite how much you love each other, and I think this is a great example of a godly marriage, there's been times where they've been a little selfish or they haven't upheld one another enough. In the same way, that represents all of us. We haven't loved God 100%. And then let me get to this point. We're asked to sell out to many things every day, education, sports, work, 
family. But we have a hard time of selling all out for our love for the Lord. Several of us have sweated and lost sleep to get to a family event or a sporting event to get that grade to do that extra work, but we struggle to love God with all of our heart. It's just too much. Maybe you're an athlete here, and I ask the question, are are you loving God as much as your sport? We give so much time to sports. We get up early to go play in sports, and, and yet we don't get up early to spend time with God. We, we, we take time away from Sunday worship to go play a, a sport. Some of you um, maybe have already checked your phone through the message to see what your March Madness team is doing. And the NFL is coming. I don't know if you know the NFL. That's a football league that happens. And we give up so much. Well, I know the game is on a Sunday, but it's only this one time. And, and you have to debate in your mind, are we loving God with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our might? What about an education? Are we spending as much time in the study of God's Word as you do books and a degree? Do you find yourself being lost in a novel or in a magazine or in something on the screen and it's just so captivating, but then when it comes time to read God's Word, you're like, boy, that was a long three minutes. (laughs) How am I ever going to do that ever again? Boy, I got it done. Whew. Do you love God's Word? Maybe you work. Do you devote as much time to God as to your work? Well, how do I do that? I don't work at the church like you do, Pastor Steve. But do you find yourself being so loving of your work and, and then coming to church or being involved is difficult for you? Does family get put before God and worship of Him? We have a family event. can Can't make it to church. We have a family event. I can't spend time alone with God today because it's got to be a family. Do you love God with all of your heart? The family's a part of that, but you're spending time with God. Need to go on vacation. We're going to start out early Sunday morning, 6 o'clock, so we can get to our destination. Why not attend church and then go on vacation? Do we love God With our music, or is our music tuned to godly music, or do we like the secular station because it has a better beat? Do we love God with the music we listen to? Do we show that we love God by what's on our screens? Do we focus as much on Jesus' face as we do our screens? When you awaken in the morning, do you turn the TV on first? Do you look at your smartphone first, or do you look to God first? What a challenge that is when we say, I love you, Lord, but let me check my scores. Let me check my stocks. Let me check to make sure the world didn't fall apart. You'd know about it if it did. iPads, phones, TVs, movies. It's easy to sit two, two and a half hours in a movie with such engaging things on the screen and ah, an hour in church. Parents, are you directing your children to focus their eyes? Are you directing your children to focus their attentions to love the Lord? And they'll know if you love the Lord or not by the way you live. Video games. We have several that play to the wee hours of the morning, and then it's a struggle to go to church, or it's a struggle to go to school, because video games just continue to happen till whatever time. Hmm, maybe we love video games. And if I may say, parents, lead your kids in this. If you're a teen or a child in the room this morning and your parents aren't putting any regulation on them, you do it for yourself because you can. Oh, may we check our hearts and see if we love the Father who loves us so much. 
One has said it this way, his is the fountain of love, his is the fountain love, ours but the stream. His love, the inducement, the pattern, and the effective cause of ours. He that is first in love loves freely, and the other, therefore, loves under obligation. I was reminded of this of the song, the hymn. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart. O oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Because here's the truth, church. The enemy wants to distract me. The enemy wants to distract you off of loving him all the time. That's one of his endeavors. Mmm. Give him this fancy house. Mmm. Give him this great advance in sports or in education. Mmm. Give him this person. And then our affections are off of him and on to this. May our affections be on God and may we love him with all of our heart, soul, and might. And then may they flow through each and every one. Number five, God's word shall be on our hearts. Who do you love? And looking at this text, we must ask ourselves this morning, do I agree with this statement that God is one and that I love Him with all of my being? Or am I wandering and flitting around with others? Do I put God's Word on my heart that I may live by Him? Can we get to a place where we love God first and then everything else flows from that? One has said this, because God is love, God can only be known through love. To know God is to love God, and to love God is to know God. I'm going to pray for you in just a couple of moments. May God increase your capacity for loving Him. My opinion is that all of us here still have a ways to go. Our intention is very good. I believe that. That's why you're here. But sometimes our practice does not lead from what our intention is. And so I want to encourage you, and I want you to hear these words. I'm going to change the word Israel to believer, but I want you to hear these words. Hear, O believer, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. Pastor Bradley is coming at this point in time. And I don't know if you noticed during the prayer time, he played a song. It's an older chorus, but I thought, hmm, we should sing this. So um, the song is, I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice, and I worship you, O oh, my soul rejoice. Take joy, my King, in what you hear. May it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Would you sing with Pastor Bradley as he sings? You can remain seated. And then I will come and pray for you. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, O oh, my soul. Rejoice. Take joy, my King, in what you hear. May it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. I love you, Lord, and and I lift my voice to worship you, O oh, my soul. Rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear. 
May it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ears. Stand with me, please. God loves you so much. He sent His Son to die on the cross for your sins and for mine. And because of that, He loves you a ton. And so I'm going to pray for you today that, that you will just reignite in your heart your love for the Lord and that you will love Him with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And I believe that when we continue to try to make that happen, that He will flow through us in a dying world that needs God's love will see that in our lives. God, I pray for each man and each woman, each boy and each girl that's here today. I pray, God, that they would love you with all of their being, not just some of their being, but all of their being. If there's been something in their life that they're like, oh, man, I've been giving more time, more affection, more pleasure to that, I pray that they would say, God, would you be my affection? Would you be the one that I adore? And may all those things come after you. God, I pray that you would be with each one here, that as they leave today, that they would love you with all of their being. And may that be a representation to all the world and the world that is in our neighborhoods and in our workplaces and in our schools. The world is crying for love, looking for love, and you are the one who loves and finds that. Oh God, I pray that you would help us to be representatives of the power of your love. May we love you with all of our beings. Gracious King, I ask for your power in this way and this day, and I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you recite the Shema with me one more time as we close in our service? I think it's going to be on the screen. Can you get it to me on the screen? Here we go. Right there we go. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your hearts. Go with God's love.